everyone. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the new Tanzu Community Edition. If we just take a look at, so we're on my Ubuntu laptop. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and download all of the, the stuff that we need to get going. I'm just going to add in the version and the operating system of the release. All this can be found on the GitHub page. And to be fair, all of this can also be found in the, the VMware document or the open source documentation, VMware documentation. So all in all, you can see over on the right hand side at the top that I started this at around 1658. And I've sped up some of the deployment tasks. It, but all in all, it takes around 34 minutes. Now this video, as you'll see, doesn't take that long um, to run through. So I've just downloaded the, uh, the release and now I'm unpacking that into its own file. And then there's an install uh, bash script in there that I'm going to run. Now it does work on Windows as well. Um, I, ha I wasn't able to get that on. There's an issue within the GitHub repository um, saying about, I think it's a certificate issue. I haven't been able to sort that yet, but um, it, everything works fine on here. So yeah, now I'm going to run the install.sh. Uh, one of the caveats or one of the prereqs is to make sure that you've got Docker installed and actively working. It also goes through about pruning some of the stuff out. So whether you're using uh, drives or anything in there as well. So I already had Docker installed and then I went and installed the, the Tanzu um, plugin as well. So I also have kubectl downloaded for previous demos, but let's take a look at what version I'm actually running here. Ah, okay, so I'm also checking the the cluster that I have available within kubectl, but I am going to do a version here. And we can do a short version here as well, so you know what our client version is and server version. So first up, we're also going to go and pull a Docker image for the HA proxy. So I'm going to go and get that command, Docker pull. And just pull that down. Now there is a warning on the on the official documentation that says about Docker hub rate limiting and a couple of caveats on that um, that might be worth taking a look at. Okay, so then we're gonna kick off with our Tanzu management cluster create. And then what this is gonna do is gonna open, because I use that slash slash UI, it's then gonna open this under localhost and obviously I'm going to flip that to dark mode. But as you can see here, so from a community edition point of view, I've got Docker, I've got vSphere, I've got AWS, and I've got Azure. Now for the purpose of this walkthrough, I want to use everything local. And I'm going to deploy my management cluster as well as my workload cluster all through Docker. So everything local, and nothing's costing me any money. So what I want to do here is I want to... Also open Terminator, uh, yeah, Terminator, which is my terminal, and get it into a position where you get to see. So you can see here as well, once I figure this out. So you can see from the original Tanzu management cluster create UI command, 
you can then see it goes through and does what it needs to do and then setting up the bootstrapper now what's happening on the right hand side is the process between that so we're setting up the bootstrap cluster we're installing the providers on the bootstrap cluster creating the management cluster and then installing providers on the management cluster and then we're moving the cluster api objects from bootstrap cluster to management cluster all of that's automated but this is what the the length of time really takes now i've completely sped this up over the next um next few minutes so that we don't have to sit and watch that and and this is really the, the the longest part of the the whole process and i could probably go and and shrink this down as well because what's going to happen is is it's going to you can see on the right hand side on that small log you're getting writing configuration starting control plane and what's actually happening in the background here is that it looks to be using some sort of kubernetes in docker so if i went to if i opened another console here or another terminal and i did uh, kind get cluster i would i expect to see a, a cluster being being created there or a cluster already created and everything else is being brought down or or configured accordingly and what this is going to give is that functionality for vSphere Tanzu on top so it doesn't really matter whether it's using kind underneath whether it's using aws virtual machines whether it's using AWS whether it's using Azure it's going to go out and do this and this gives us the ability to do it using the community edition which is obviously free and open source it seems so it gives us a lot of functionality to play around and get things up and running now we're in that speed sped up moment so everything's going to start going very quick obviously you can pause the video and you can check this out but ideally you're just going to run this locally because really the caveat here is that the system requirements here even even are relatively low so in particular i think it's six gig of ram about 15 16 gig of of some storage space and then four cpus now most laptops are going to give you that capability this is a pretty rel relatively new cl uh, laptop that i'm using okay so that sped through gives you the the green ticks and basically says installation complete you can now close the browser we're going to head back into terminal make this a little bit bigger so you can see it so at this point this is where we want to go and create our workload cluster so actually if you saw before i cleared it and made it bigger again is that we can we can now go and uh, create the cluster using the command but one of the initial to make sure that everything is has gone correctly as we do tanzu management cluster get and you get a breakdown of what that management cluster actually looks like and how long it's been up but also what versions it's also using and then also you'll see here that we have our tkg hyphen management docker also in our context so we can just flip over to that with the following commands which means we can then go and investigate and use that that management cluster Now, if I run a get nodes, we should see a single control plane, I think, or maybe two. Yeah, so you get to see here a control plane, which is the master, and then a another worker node underneath as well. And then the next thing, let's now create our work workload cluster. So again, we use that Tanzu binary, Tanzu cluster create, and I'm just going to call it TKG hyphen workload. And again, I'm going to speed through this as well. So you can see here that we're at 1717. So it's taken around, let's say 20 minutes so far. So 
we've probably got another 15 minutes in real time but obviously as the the power of video editing allows me to shrink this down to a 17 minute video so we can see here that it goes away it creates it's waiting for the cluster to be initialized and then waiting for the cluster nodes to be available within our new cluster and like i said before if i was to go now into kind i would be and run that kind get cluster i would now see a second cluster created and again i've sped up here so we can now go and list our clusters that are available to us from a workload point of view so you could go and create your many different workload clusters at this point and again we don't see it in here so we manually have to go and add this command which is tanzu cluster cube config get and then we're going to basically merge our tkg workload cluster into our cube C into our cube config file I think I'll try and be smart here and, and basically copy and paste something. It doesn't work. So I just actually say, let's just take the actual the example that they give you. Okay, so now we're in the, the context of our work of our workload cluster, our TKG hyphen workload. And this is actually where we want to start provisioning our workloads. So you can see as well, if I do a Docker PS, shrink that down a bit, you can see at this point, this is what we've got actually running on our local machine. But in theory, this gives us access to TKG, TKGM, but ultimately all in, in Docker as well. Now at this point, we also don't have any... Um, storage classes we so anything we could only run stateless workloads we could only run other other pods within our kubernetes clusters if we want that um capability of being able to store stateful workloads then we'd have to create a storage class so in, in order to do that then we'll jump on to this next section where we're actually going to deploy some of those providers that were previously mentioned or packages. Um, and you can see here that running Tanzu package available list gives us nothing to begin with. I run it again as well and then realize actually I need to go and actually add some package repositories before we can actually gain access into that. So again, you get to see 1730. So we're now at the 30 minute mark before we're um, before we're fully up and running and available to start creating our our applications and i guess depending on the the spec of the machine would depend on how fast that would actually turn around so i'm going to add this tanzu package again this is all in the documentation and then me being really impatient package available list isn't going to be there yet because it's going to be reconciling and it takes a couple more maybe seconds to for that to come up and then basically what I'm going to do is because we're using kind underneath is I'm going to take one of these um, packages that we have available to us and I'm going to just quickly deploy the uh, the local storage package so we should see re reconciling success shortly and then we'll get the list of available packages and then we can get that in installed and that's really what I wanted to show in this this short video of, of it and it's still fresh from being released yesterday so okay so succeeded is there successful so now if we go and list we see our repository and if we go and list out the available packages we should see things like cert manager things like external dns fluent gatekeeper grafana harbor etc but the one that i want is actually the local path storage 
and we can go and take a look at that because we want to know well what is actually available so if we then go and take that it, we can then see what versions are actually available which obviously we're not expecting a long list of different versions today but we do have two that we can choose from and you can see that they have dated the same um, and I'm sure there's a reason behind that but what I want to do is I want to actually roll out that version 0.0.20 .0 so I want to do Tanzu package install and then we can say the display name and then we're going to give the path name or package package name which is that long local path storage community and then we're going to give the version that we want to use which is the 0 0.0 zero. but obviously you could go and follow the same steps and bring out all of those other packages that are in there and then to finish off so that's going to go and install that and then before we finish up like so this gives you a, a good solid base to be able to then start to go and run your stateful applications your applications within this cluster namely what i'll try and do next is actually deploy casting k10 as well as some applications and start start protecting those so if we now go and look and what this automatically does is actually it creates that storage class for you so you can see that it's using rancher.io local path but that's all been embedded into that package it's all been created because of that package i can also run kubester which is an open source tool to be able to check up on your on your um, kubernetes storage options you can see here that i can run an fio test against that storage but that's basically it it's not a csr driver so i'm unable to to run another test hopefully that was useful